Have you ever wondered how to stream audio directly from your DAW to use in a YouTube live stream? Well, let's talk about it. Hi, I'm Steven Malin, music composer, educator, and arranger, helping you to elevate your story. Today, we're talking about how to stream audio directly from a DAW so that you can stream on YouTube Live. So today we're gonna to look exactly how to do that with a free plugin and free software so that you can do this immediately from your DAW today. Now, for those of you who use Pro Tools, since that is a completely different codec, a completely different plugin system, stay tuned to the end and I'll show you exactly how to do that in there as well. It's gonna cost you a little bit, but it's gonna be worth it. Let's take a look exactly how to do this. So here I am in Cubase. This process will work the exact same in every single DAW with the exception of Pro Tools, which we'll talk about at the end. But you'll notice right off the bat that if I just open up a session, load a Yamaha C7 piano or any other instrument, if I start playing, you're not gonna hear it because the audio is not being connected and directed to where you're streaming from. So you'll notice that the meter is playing because it's coming through Cubase, my DAW, but in order to make sure that this is connected to OBS or any other streaming software, we need to make sure we have a plugin in place. So in order to do this, I recommend that you pick up the free plugin called Voxingo Recorder. Now this is a VST for Windows. It's a 32-bit plugin. For Mac users, stick around and I'll show you exactly how you can do that as well. But if you're on PC, all you have to do is download this and you're good to go. Now the catch here is that this is a 32-bit plugin. So if you're using older software, perhaps such as older versions of Logic, older versions of Digital Performer and Cubase, then you'll be fine. But in recent years, there have been newer versions of these DAWs that are 64-bit, which basically means that they're using more cores of your machine, so they have to have 64-bit plugins. If you have a more recent version of your DAW, you are gonna have to spend a little bit in order to convert that 32-bit plugin into a 64-bit plugin but believe me, it is well worth it and it doesn't cost much. So in order to do that, I recommend you purchase JBridge that converts 32-bit plugins into 64-bit plugins. It's just a one-time process. You load the plugin through JBridge and it converts it. It's very, very useful for loading older plugins in your newer software. Now this is available for both Windows and Mac, so it's a great solution for both sides of the equation. Now, JBridge, it does cost about 17 US dollars, but well worth it because I don't know about you, but I have old plugins that I like to use in my newer software. So that's kind of a, uh, a no brainer there. So once you've done that and you've made that conversion and we hop back over to our Cubase session, I can go to my master channel, my stereo out, type in Voxingo, and this box pops up. Now, a couple settings here for my MME device. I'm gonna set it to my audio interface, which is my Focusrite USB. For my output two, I'm gonna put MME, so it just connects those two items. And then bit depth, I'm gonna put at whatever my session is set to, which for me, my default is 24 bit. Then as soon as I hit start, you'll notice as soon as I start playing, it now comes through. And the reason I know that is because if I go up to my top screen where I have OBS loaded, which is how I do all of my streaming, free software, you can check that out. You'll notice right up here under this section that says desktop audio, which is the default routing for OBS. When I start playing, you can hear it because the desktop audio meter is playing. Because what that's doing is it is loading this Voxenco Recorder 64-bit plugin, and it's routing it directly to OBS. So that's essentially what we need to do. Now, you're not hearing what I'm hearing because of my headphones, which are connected to my audio interface. So that's really good. That means I can actually set up particular items that I want to hear that you don't need to hear, but that can also create a little bit of confusion because actually when I play this right now, it's double because I'm hearing the headphone version and the OBS version. So very quick, easy solution for that is just to go over to my computer keyboard and hit the mute button. And all that does is it X's out 
my audio interface from going to my headphones. And now I hear exactly what you hear, which is what we want, because when I'm doing a live stream, I need to hear exactly what you're hearing at the exact level that you're hearing it at. Now you'll also notice that within OBS, I have my desktop audio set to negative 5.5 dB. I found through experimentation that setting it to Unity, which is zero dB, really peaks and it, it sounds really nasty and there's too much volume coming through. So I've just found that around that spot, around negative six dB, something in that range, uh, really allows the volume to hang out in the yellow range without ever peaking into the red, which is another reason why I talk so much about putting limiters on your stereo out. And a limiter just crushes all the volume down to a ceiling. And so in this case, I do negative 0.1 dB. You guys who watch a lot of my content, you hear me say that all the time. So just plop that on your stereo out and it'll make sure that the audio that you're sending to the stream or to the video that you're recording never goes beyond that peaking point, which would pop and sound nasty. So that's essentially all that we need to do. And if your session is ready to go, then I would go over to YouTube, go up to the top of my channel, a little plus icon, go live. And once that loads, I need to hit new stream and I can set whatever I want here. Let's just do test video, new stream. And then once my auto generated key comes up, I can copy it, go over to OBS, go to settings, stream, and then copy and paste over. You can see that it is the same if I wanted to show them. Hide it if you don't wanna show it, apply, okay. And this is something you have to do every single time you create a new stream with YouTube. And then as soon as I hit that start streaming button, boom going to appear on my YouTube live screen and then I can hit this button which turns from edit into start streaming. You can click that red button and the stream will start. It's good to keep in mind that when you stream there's going to be about a 10 to 15 second, maybe a little bit longer latency. There's going to be that wait time between what you're doing and when the audience actually sees it. So it's a good idea to um, ask questions throughout the stream so that they can answer. So for those of you who use Pro Tools, let's take a look at a little bit of workaround we have to do to make sure audio streams from there. All right, so if I open up Pro Tools, the exact same issue is gonna happen with any other DAW where if I just open it up, I load a sound, in this case strings, I could record enable it and start playing. And you'll notice how the Pro Tools audio meter is going up and down because it is receiving audio and I can hear it in my headphones because that's how I have it routed. But the problem is you can't hear it on the live stream or recorded video. And so in order to fix that, we have to use a plugin that is appropriate for RTAS, R-T-A-S, if you're using an older Pro Tools version or if you're using one of the more modern Pro Tools versions 11 and up, then you have to use an AAX plugin. And the trouble with that is a lot of companies don't make plugins for that. So if you're gonna use an older plugin like the Voxingo Recorder, there is no um, AAX plugin version. So we have to use a wrapper, very much like JBridge. So in this situation, we need to grab a plugin called the DDMF Meta Plugin. Now, the good news is you can try this out. There's a demo at the bottom for Windows or Mac and it cost $50, which is a little bit of an investment, but I feel like if this is something that um, you're gonna be doing a lot of streaming within Pro Tools, it's something you have to have. You have to have some kind of wrapping plugin to get that audio routed without having to do any super complicated routing um, with your audio interface. I don't know about you, but the simplicity of just hitting that mute button on my computer keyboard and streaming by loading one plugin that simplicity is very nice that the fact that I can do the exact same streaming process for any of my DAWs for all of my live streams, that is a huge win for me. So once you download DDMF, you can open up Pro Tools again. Once you do that, go over to your master track, just like we would in any other DAW. And there's a new little category here called wrapped plugins, meta plugin. This plugin is an AAX or an RTAS, depending on your Pro Tools version. 
and it actually lists out every VST that you have on your computer. It finds them quite easily. And so what we do is we scroll down to Voxingo Recorder. And we're going to click and drag it into the interface. And then over here we have audio input and audio output. You can click and drag those wherever you wish. And we have this little output L and output right, left and right. We click and drag those to connect them. You can actually choose how much dB it gets. Or you can set it back to zero by double clicking. And you just connect them to the ins and the outs, little arrows. And as soon as we do that, everything's connected. But the plugin is not turned on, so we have to double click the plugin, open it up, and do the exact same process of selecting our audio interface, output to MME to connect those two, bit depth 24, and hit start. And now everything is running, that's loaded, and now as soon as I start playing, everything works. And then exactly like before, I would go back to OBS and you'll notice that once I'm playing, my desktop audio meter is very happy. And that's how you can tell whether or not your audio is coming through to the live stream by using that desktop audio meter there. Thanks for watching guys. This is helpful for you. Hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Leave a comment below with your questions if you have any regarding this streaming process and get out there and have some live streams. Grow your channel, grow your brand. See you guys next time.